I come from photography, and I teach photography. I come from photography, I work in photography, and in video and in film. But one thing I always tell young people is, you, you can't be a photographer and not make films. And there are almost no clients that will work with you, especially young people. Older ones who are very established, that's a different thing. So everything he said about continuous light is absolutely what I think as well. Now, working with young people, we have limited, we can't work with 20 lights. Sometimes it's one. And that is what I want to talk about today. I one time saw a student say to a photography teacher, you know, what do you think of this picture? And I, and I saw it, and there were shadows everywhere on the floor, and the, uh, and the photographer said, said to him, I think he had a hard time thinking of what to say because it was so bad, and he just said, there is only one sun, and he walked away. And I thought that was kind of, that was kind of funny. I, th I think the, the, the student had a, a lot to think about from that, and that was really about, uh, about uh, concentrating and, and, and learning that one source, and then, adding, and, and then adding the others. Now, I did my first music video about 25 years ago in Cuba, and I got that music video because the artist saw some pictures I did of a, of a singer in a magazine and wanted to look like that. And I had nothing to show. So I went to see a producer who set me up with a very good director of photography at the time, whose showreel had the latest videos from U2, Madonna, Depeche Mode, all sorts of famous, uh, famous bands. So we got the job. We went there. On the way back, I asked him, how come you agreed to do this uh, video with me? It was my, uh, it was my first one, and you've already, done, you've already been doing the best. And he said, well, because the producer told me that uh, you come from photography, and I thought I might learn something from the way you direct me to do the light. And well, I, did, I learned something. I learned something from his answer to that question. And I also learned something on the last day we were shooting the singer in one of those old Cuban cars on a street, and the sun went behind, went behind a building, and suddenly we were, we were in the shadow, and we, we didn't have the shot. And I thought that was it. We had to cancel that. And the local gaffer started running around the street, knocking on doors, and they were running out with mirrors. And the guy runs out with a big mirror, and he goes down the street where there was a bit of sun. And at the same time, another, another guy runs out with another mirror from people's houses who just who just opened the door, and he grabs that other mirror. And so one stream of light goes down, hits the second mirror, gets streamed into the car, and suddenly that car gets filled up with light. And I discovered light stream before it existed, or maybe it had existed in somebody's head back then, but uh, it had changed the way that I, uh, it changed the way that I, that I, uh, I thought about light from, from that very moment. And I also learned that there is only one sun, but you can do a, a lot with it. Well, years later, I've been invited to be a teacher and give master classes two or three times a year at the Ecole de Gobelin in Paris. And one of the things I always did was I, I mentioned this uh, little story of what happened in Cuba. Well, not right away, because then they wouldn't know what to do. But I would say to students, you have to do a three-point lighting, and you only have one light. And they'd be in a studio with a lot of equipment, and they would have to figure out how to put a front light, a back light, and a fill light from one source. And they were doing that with, uh, with uh, metal, uh, mirrors, um, scrims sometimes because the light was too strong coming from the back or the side. And they would get something, and it was never great. But last year, I was introduced to Lightstream. I brought it into the school. So now that subject of creating a three-point lighting with one light became too easy in a way, but we could push it and we could do a lot more things with it. So it was not only the three-point light from one light using reflectors, but also being able to make three different backgrounds, a white background, a gray background, and a black background, and still being able to model light on one person. And what I try to explain is if you can, if you can do that with this limited light source, you can walk into a hotel room to do a video or a photo of a celebrity where you only have five minutes and the set is not good, and you can find a way to make it good and make it the way you feel. 
I really like this quote from Roger Deakins. I think it was James Wong Howe who said, I wish I had more time because I used to light a set with a hundred lights and now I've got it down to ten or eleven, but I really want to get it down to one. He was searching for simplicity. He was searching for something significant and pure. Well, that, that spoke a lot to me and I wanted to share that with you because sometimes we add, we add, we add, but reducing, reducing, reducing can also add something. So, saving time and space. This is something that when I first introduced Lightstream, for example, to the Ecole de Gobelin in Paris, I would get some people saying, well, you know, we don't, we don't have the time and the space to be able to figure out how to do all this with reflectors. And I thought, well, that's, that's crazy because if you need to light, put a soft light here and you only have this much space, and if you're going to do that with a traditional HMI, you're going to, you, you need to go back, you need to, put in, you need to put in a softbox or a reflector or a bounce, whereas now all you have to do is put up a stand or clip something to hold it on, have a light from the bottom, and you can create that same light or a very similar light. So it's something that you know, we'll, have to, we'll have to show. Education, I think, is a big part of this, and that really had come from the reason that I had done this first video 25 years ago in Cuba was the luck of a DP who thought he might learn something. I learned something. And now teaching what you can do with reflected light really made me see that education on something that is actually very simple to use, but complicated in people's minds when they don't try it. So light stream is a verb. That's something that, I don't know if you noticed, but at the very beginning I said some local gaffer grabbed a grabbed a mirror and streamed the light back to the car. Well, that's the way I, I like to speak about it because it makes me think about light like, like water, like something that moves and it can be easily shaped. So, and that's a way that I, I explain it as well to students. We talk about streaming the light, or I talk about streaming the light, and they start talking about streaming the light. So that's why I think that even the name light stream is so, is so good and so helpful for understanding what the light can do. Now, here are just a, a few random pictures of how students set things up at the school. Uh, as you can see, a lot of the times they only have one light, but here, for example, uh, this student put one light as a top light, uh, one source as a top light, there's only one light. One is going to light the background directly behind her, and one is a, one is a fill light. So now that's all on one stand, so when somebody wants to move it, they just move it to another spot, and they don't have to be moving a lot of equipment around. So Again, saving time and saving space. So this was very funny because the, this was a test before a video. I said, use a reflector. And the two students said, no, we're going to put up some light panels. We're going to put them up on the stand, and, and we're going to do it that way. Well, they did it, and it didn't work. And after they spent about two hours setting that up, in 15 minutes, they set this up, and it was exactly what they wanted. These students wanted to do something with color, so they gelled the lights. But then I, again after, which I, I didn't have time to, I didn't manage to get a photograph of it, but they gelled the reflectors instead of gelling the lights, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting, and they got a very similar, if not same, result. I took the lights oh, back to the studio to do a little video over the weekend because I wanted to show some of the other teachers in the school what we could do with under 100 watts. I want to share my experience using Datolite Lightstream. It uses parallel beam intensifiers with precision reflectors. I first experimented with them during a lighting masterclass that I gave at the Image School in Paris. Students were able to find new creative ways to light photos and video, from an overhead shaft of light to a classic beauty key light for a white background video shoot. But I really wanted to see what I could do just using a minimum setup and using under 100 watts of light. So with 100 watts, this room is lit. I used a 90 watt DLED 9 and a vintage 100 watt DHL2. Without the intensifiers added, I would never have been able to do it. Once you get used to it, it's really easy to set up quickly, especially when working in a small space. This is how it looks with me in the room. The key light is from a number four reflector. I was pretty happy with the light on the face, no matter which way I was facing. Because the light is reflected, the inverse square law for light 
means that when I move closer or further away from the source, the exposure does not really move much. I also wanted to try a setup with only one light. So this is with only one light, the DLED 9. It's pretty incredible. There are two number one reflectors sending light for backlight and front fill. The number four is again the key light. Now with daylight coming in through the windows. I use the small light for backlight and the DLED 9 for the rest. It's really easy and precise to place the light. You can grab a small part of either beam to add a different source wherever you want. Once you decide on the placement, just lock it in place. I was really happy with the result and how easy it was to balance and not having the set look too lit. This set has a beautiful multi-directional light and no hard shadows from the picture frame. Incredibly, it was just one light. I can't imagine how many scrims and flags I would need if I didn't use the light stream reflectors and the parallel beam intensifier. So we also do workshops with tabletop and one of the things that students need to learn is that what you do with the tabletop light, you can do in a set with people because the, the principles are the same. So it's an easy way to get to know, to get to know the reflectors and, and what they do. So let's have a look at this. The goal is to do a professional product photography shot with just one light. So you can see here the number one streams light to, to a mirror on the other side, a reflector on the other side. That number five puts a nice light strip across the top. The number three in the back, the big one, is creating a nice back glow. The projector attachment is an extra thing, but I just really love it. I love to be able to bring up, for example, the light on that little cross. I could do it in post-production, but it's so much nicer to do it for real on set. These are the final shots. It's important to be able to take photos and videos with the same light. So this is being lit with only one light. Main beam is going into a 25 by 25 number 4 for a smooth gradient in the back. Um, here a number 1 is streaming light into a reflector in the back. And the number 5 is creating that nice strip of light on the front of the bottle. This small number one reflector streams to the number two down below, which lights the front. This number five reflector creates a strip of light that goes on the back there to create the back light of the bottle. This number four creates an edge light on the side of the bottle. This number two is to make a wider stream on the number four here to create that edge light on this side of the bottle. This one is a little bit different. Basically the difference is the, the front light comes from a larger number one reflector. It's receiving light that's being streamed from a small number one just behind this projector that you can't see into a larger number one reflector, which is for the front light. This number two is to light the top of the bottle. And of course, that puts light onto the number four, which makes that strip of light and reflection on the back of the bottle. The larger number four is to make a line down the other side of the bottle on the opposite side. That light is coming from this number 5, which makes a strip of light on the reflector. You can see that, how it looks in the final shot. And in this final shot, we just added a gobo on the bottom floor light. And the person, who, the company that made that gin liked it, so that became an advertising uh, very quickly after. And uh, one of the other products as well was used in editorial. So well, you've seen that. Now, a lot of times I get questions about what camera should I buy? What equipment should I invest in? And at this point, I have to really say that I always basically say the same thing and hold off on cameras. They, they, they change too fast. Every year, year and a half, something better comes out. So, so unless they're working all the time, it's very hard to, uh, 
to uh, get the money back from the investment. So don't, don't invest in cameras, maybe lenses, but then again, they might switch from Canon to Sony to Nikon. So I say get lights, rent the camera, borrow the camera or have a small one, but invest in lighting and a good light, not the ones I think uh, you mentioned before, not to get the cheap stuff on Amazon. That's exactly, exactly what I say. Get one good light, it'll last 20 years, if not your whole life. And if you can, and now it's so much easier to demonstrate that with one good light and a lot of reflectors, you can create just about anything. And then as the budget increases, to, to keep adding good quality lights. Well, that's basically what I just said. So I love making these light trees now. Constellations, I call them light constellations, on one stand, and I can move this constellation pretty much anywhere I want. The light is attached to the bottom, so that's one thing to move around. Now, in the next couple of videos, I wanna talk about hard light and soft light coming from the same light constellation. The goal here was to shoot on location and to keep things very simple so that we could do everything with only one or two lights. Here, this light is putting a little bit of, this reflector is putting a little bit of light on the table. This other one is moving light to the other side to light that saw down there from this little, this little reflector. This number five is lighting the, that strip that's showing the tools. Now I'm gonna turn off the front reflector, which was a 50 by 50 to be used as a fill. Um, looks okay, but let's turn it on because it's always good to do things with a bit of fill. If there was a real client, they would make me do that. So I did it. Now I'm ready to shoot in a clean, small set without a lot of stands, uh, scrims and flags cluttering up the area so this is just this just keeps everything super super clean so now let's turn off that front fill you can see where the light where the light is going that's one light that's making I think uh, five or six sources of light the other thing is wherever he's moving from the from one side of the table to the other side of the table his his face is is not changing exposure and that is due to the inverse square law for light. Now over here, even more simple, one light, two reflectors, one for the back, which creates a nice backlight like it was coming in from a skylight or the window. And uh, that whole saw, that whole stretch was being lit from one number five reflector. Here again, same, number five, that puts a strip down on the wood and a number three, that's for him, for the backlight. It's very easy to work with that. That number five is just so, so useful, so versatile for doing things like that. One, one reflector makes that very nice spread. Um, it's good for people, objects, and set decors. Two reflectors on the front, a five and a three, and one on the back. The five is for the surfboard, creates a nice strip of light down the board. The, 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 the three is for him, and the number two is for the backlight. And What's really great is because of the inverse square law, his exposure is not changing as he's getting closer to that main light source. So now let's, let's edit this into a little video, a little 15 second video that he can use for Instagram. So I was in that place at nine o'clock in the morning and I was out in the, packed up in the car at 12. So that was very, very quick. I mean, it's kind of incredible how many different sources of light you can get from one projector. The front fill had the light set to flood. It didn't have an intensifier on it. I could have put another five sources on, but we'll talk about that in the next video. What's also interesting in a setup like this, if you look at the background, you don't see the light. There was no electricity in the back corner. And that's just one reflector on a simple clamp on the top of a piece of wood. So now the reason I said that that light was on flood, on this number four reflector, which was the key light, which, which you're gonna see, I wanted that to, to be very soft, a very soft source. If I would have put it from the intensifier directly into it, the beam would be very small and the light would be harder on the face. I could have put it on flood, but if I put it on flood, I wouldn't have enough power to light the back as well. And that is the magic of the intensifier. 
with the intensifier, I have enough power to be able to put a number two or three, I think that's a number three, which is putting the light like this into the number four, which gives that soft light on the face. But still, I could grab a little piece of it, send it to the back where I think there was a two or a three to create backlight on the hair. Uh, it was also enough to take another reflector and send it for details on clothing or accessories. And that is the beauty of this system, is that when you use the intensifier, you think, okay, I'm not limited to this because I can grab a reflector and make this, and I still have enough power, more than if I would have just used the flood to do many other things. Let's have a look at this. I wanted to create a very nice light. Now we're in the studio. I'm using just the number four, a 50 by 50 reflector as the main key light. It makes a really soft, beautiful light on the, on the face. The light that's coming into it is coming from a number three, 25 by 25. That makes sure that the light touching the number four reflector is wide enough to create that soft beam. We're adding another light just for that strip in the back that's coming from the number five, which makes those beautiful long lines, and a bit of side light on the face. Now let's put down this unrolling some diffusion just to, just to see how that softens the shadows. It's not bad. Personally, I, I like it a little bit harder, but it's nice to know that we have this tool if we need it. Everywhere he moves his face, we're getting a nice light. So I take it away because uh, well, I like it better without. And we can add these little we can add these little small reflectors. Uh, this is a number two, and I can I can use that just to bring out highlights either on the face or maybe there's an object in the scene, uh, or part of the clothing. It's really nice to be able to enhance details. Obviously, we don't really need it in this in this setup, so uh, I'll just take it out. I really like the light just coming from one reflector, so I'm going to turn off that backlight. And what's great is having the light and the reflector on the same stand, I can just move it around and see right away what I'm getting. Now let's do it with somebody sitting down. We have the same light. We can adjust the back just to get the hair light exactly where we want it, or maybe we want it on the shoulder, higher, lower. It's super easy to do that just by moving a little, uh, one little reflector. Wherever she moves her head, now right to the left, the light is soft enough and directional enough that it creates flattering shadows that are, that are not too hard. Now we'll turn that backlight on again so we have that, that nice line from the number five and from the same source, a little bit of light coming onto the side of her hair, which makes a nice little V to frame her face. You know, of course, this is broadside lighting. If you wanted to have short lighting where the shadow on the face is in the front, you just move the whole light tree to the other side. I'm going to take away that backlight so that I can be more flexible and um, move the light to the side, move it to wherever I want. On the side, I'm having more shadow. I can do something that's a little bit more moody, but it looks really nice still. And then again, like the other, I can just move that whole stand see what I'm getting. Now I want to try it with some diffusion again like I did the last time. Similar results. The shadows are lessened. Um, it's very flattering as well, but I, I prefer the other light. I prefer the light that's a little bit stronger, but a lot of people will prefer this. So it's nice to know that you can do it and you can do it so quickly as well. I love just keeping things rolled up on the on the top. This is a super fast, easy, beautiful light that does not take a lot of space. And as you can see, you can shoot photos at the same time, and uh, it's very, very flexible. So I had a photo shoot to do. You were talking about Flash on the Beach. The inspiration for the shoot was the movie Swept Away by Lena Wertmuller. And we looked at these and thought, OK, easy to do with Flash, easy and, and not. If it, was, if it was for video, we would have to bring either a generator or a battery projector, probably something like a, a 1K with a diffusion, slight diffusion on it, but instead we used one number four reflector. And what's great is you can see that the reflector not only makes the light on the subject, 
but creates a shadow so the light doesn't come into the lens. Good for photo and film. And again, that was published here, right after. And I thought, I thought the light looked pretty good. So there again, you can see the result and how the reflector was used to stop the light going into the, the sunlight going into the lens. So just my final thoughts are that what really makes this, this work is, is using the, the, the intensifiers. I know bef before, you know, we, we speak a lot about, about the reflectors, but without the intensifiers on, it's, it's like it's limiting it to, you know, it's like having a, a supercar that's uh, being used uh, that's not firing in all, on all cylinders. It still looks good, but it goes a lot faster when you, when you put this intensifier on because now you, I don't know if you, I, we say triple, quadruple the, uh, the lighting output, but it's much more than that. It's, it's being able to put it in many different places. I also think that the, the education is a big part of it because I think that I, I hear a lot of you know, DPs, like I said at the beginning, saying, well, I'm not used to lighting like that. It's a different way of lighting. It's not a different way of lighting. It's the same way of lighting. It's different tools, and it's not, and it's not, uh, it just needs to be tried once. And I think that it's a, it's a thing like you might, you might not even want to, to, to use reflectors or, or lights, but it's important that you have them around. It's like a tripod. You want it in the truck. You want it in the rental van. You want to have it on set. You might not use it. You probably will. But it's, it's, it, today, it's so small and light and easy to carry around that it's crazy not to have it. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.